um, signs up with Jackson to get their annual fees uh, for FX supervisor you know, licenses and, and software. You can be part of the FX user community. Um, basically, when we started it two years ago, I thought it was going to be not that popular. It's crazy. People are posting on this thing everything from, we put on here all the product announcements, whether there's recalls or flashes, hey, guess what, new revision of job, well, here's what you got to do. Uh, sales and marketing resources, so like all these PowerPoints and things like that are all on there. Uh, new software, right? We post like 6.0, it's there, it's located. Is that eventually going to be the old ABCS? Is that eventually going to be the old ABCS? The exchange site, yeah. Is yeah, they've, they've been threatening to shut that down for a long time, so yeah. yeah. Um, There's um, a bunch on there. Yeah, learning and training resources, so like Greg Wilmer does a bunch of videos on how to operate PCT or how to operate FX Workbench. They'll put videos on there and things like that. So all of the stuff that we post on there, plus it's just a big you know, repository of all questions from everybody across FX land. We'll ask questions, hey, how do I do this? How do I get this done? And quite often David will answer, Christian Tremblay, or somebody from around the world will answer this question before you can get a chance to do it. So it's a great place to go for, for support. You know, especially for you guys who are going, all right, if I, need, if I have a tech support or a question on how to do something, you have to call Jackson, then Jackson calls tech support, right? And then you get, you know, one of our techs we have, you know, John DeMonico, Rogelio Gomez, um, Martin Stoppel, or John Franz answering questions, right? They're all good guys, right? But the real good guy is Greg Wilmer. Oh, now you guys can skip from going to Rogelio <laughs> and John and go right to Wilmer, because he posts stuff on here, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Which is kind of weird, we're figuring out, is that right or not, you know? Well, yeah, but he stays in his house in his basement all the time. He stays at home in his basement, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's not on the road. <laughs> right, exactly. But what I'm saying is that it's, it's a great place for to do all kinds of, uh, you know, searching for information, asking questions, you know, here, like software sharing. There, there's people that post their stuff on there. Oh, here's my three, you know, pump lead lag application for PCT. If you want it, go ahead, here's what it does, and here's our caveats or whatever, and you take a look at it and test it out and go, oh, yeah, this is exactly what I want. Then you don't have to create it yourself, right? So you can uh, share software there. They have things like you know featured members every month of you know who this person is, what they do. So when you know that they uh, post something and answer to your question, it's a reliable thing, right? We're encouraging more people to mark things as like oh helpful answer or correct answer, you know, so you can go through the whole list. Like, sometimes you go to a website and there's just a bunch of stuff on there, and then you don't know if that's right or wrong or if it helped or not, right? So we're encouraging people to do that. So it's it's a nice place to go to, a uh, great place to get information, and all you have to do is sign up. Right, so if you have FX supervisory uh, software uh, license, then you can go ahead and do whatever you want to do. Right? We'll do polls on there. Hey, do you guys use this? We use it for a lot of like new product enhancements. What are we going to put in there next? You know, hey, you know what you guys should really have? You should really have this. You know, oh, that's great. I'm glad you did that. I would not know. I'm not have known that otherwise. Right? I'm just sitting in Milwaukee. Yeah, come on, talk to you guys, and you know, maybe you don't like right now. Said, what feature could I add to FX supervisor that'd be the best thing in the whole world? Save you time, save you money, make more money, sell more boxes. Right now, everyone's going, I don't know. I don't know it until I know it, right? Until I need it, right? Unless you got something. If you got something, eat it my way because I'd love to find out, right? But anyway, point being that this is a good spot to do all that stuff. All right. So FX Workbench, you guys are probably familiar um, for the most part with this screen. It's our, it's our home screen uh, page. All these things on my left-hand side are just stations that I have, so they're like FX supervisors or FX servers that I'm connected up to, right? But what I'd like to do is kind of show you some of the labor-saving stuff that we kind of built into this uh, software. So what I thought I'd do is just create a station, right? A station is not the platform, a station is my database. You know, my school, my church, my hospital, whatever I'm doing, right? So I thought I'd do something simple, right? So I've logged on, I've got FX Workbench here. And uh, I look at my application director, I've got no, no stations running right now. Uh, they're all idle, right? These are all stations I've created over time. So they're all running, they're all idle. I don't have anything running right now. So what I'm doing is, I'm, let's say I'm a, I'm a uh, sort of a junior person, right? I don't know a whole lot about Workbench, but I've been told to create a station, make graphics, add a schedule, bring in some points, right? Okay. So what I do in that case is I go to my, open up Workbench, I go to my tools, go to my drop down menu, and click on launch project file. Okay? A launch project file. A pop up box is, hey, here's where you're, uh, you're going to save this project file once you get done with it. So I'll pick a spot on my computer. Uh, FX projects, where I'm going to save this file when it's on. It's an Excel spreadsheet, okay? Hit save and launch. And as you can see down in the lower right hand corner, my, my Excel is right there. So you have to have Excel, but it's not launched. Hit save and launch, and hopefully it will start um, my uh, Microsoft Excel application. So it's starting up here again. My computer is pretty slow, so uh, give it a second to give it a second to start. Just 
see where he got that from, Dave? Unfortunately, I was driving <laughs> left when he went right. So Show where you get that. Tools. Tools. Launch project file. Okay. Most of the stuff that we've Is added. Is that only on 6, not 5.2? No, I think five? it's on 5.2. Yeah. It's on 5.2. Okay. Yep. Okay. yep. Launch project file right there. So most of the stuff that you can see, all the stuff with the little facility explorer icons, are things that we've added. That stuff you won't get if you have, uh, you know, a Vicon installation or a Honeywell web installation. Okay. So I hit launch project file. It started my Excel spreadsheet and came up with this, uh, you know, display. So this is your main interface right here, and my navigation is along the bottom. Project info, which is the tab we're on, networks, devices, schedules, and groups. Okay. So the main screen you put on is the documentation information. This doesn't show up in the station at all. This is just for your, for your uh, benefit. Right? That's my project name and put an address, contact information, so on and so forth. The important thing in this one is to give the station, a database, a name. Right? So I'm naming my FX supervisor with some sort of name, right? School, hospital, office building, whatever you got, right? That page is done for right now. Just put in my station name. Second thing is I go to my networks tab. So I have to add some networks to my FX supervisor. So we give you two choices out of the box, N2 or MSTP. So I'll add my BACnet MSTP network since I got a bunch of PCG controllers. Wow. So it fills in the network name, it's free to change if you want to, automatically picks the right COM port, the first one, COM2, automatically picks the right baud rate, and it's up to you to give it a network number, like you know 5,000 or whatever, whatever you name your networks. Right? You want to have all separate network names on there, right? numbers. Because right? you can have up to five networks on here, right? And you don't want to have any of the same networks uh, across the back of the network. So 5,000. That's what I use. And then I take my controllers and as I put them along, I put them, you know, 5,000 plus whatever the MAC addresses or the, the MSTP addresses. So they're all separate backnet object IDs. And I'll also add an uh, M2 network on here. Just for giggles. It puts it on the next available COM port, does the right baud rate, and networks don't really mean a whole lot in the N2 world. So I'll just pick one for that one. Okay? So I've now added a backnet network and an N2 network to my FX supervisor. That's all I've done so far. Next, I'll go to my devices tab across the bottom here. And I'll put in what devices are on that network. Right? So on my MSTP network, I'm going to put a device, chiller, 1. <coughs> MSTP address, it's number 10. I have uh, you know, two more of those, just let's say. And I'll go to my resource file. So let's say I went through asset and I've made all my CAF files. Or you guys, the smart guys, went through PCT and created a bunch of CAF files and gave it to some sort of some sort of a junior person who's not familiar with that. So you navigate to the place where you have your CAF file. So I'll click twice in that in that area right here, and I'll go to some place where I have the CAF file saved. Uh, and I'll pick my CAF file, right? And I'll hit open. So it adds that guy on there. And then because I've got two extra ones. I'll hit duplicate, and I'll put those on there. So I've got two extra. Oh wait, maybe I don't have uh, three chillers. Maybe I only have two. I can take this guy and just hit delete. Wipe that guy out. I'm um, also on my MSTP network. I've got you know VAV-1, and that's at address number 12. And I've got eight more of those guys. So I've got nine total. I'll go pick my cat file again. Um, <coughs> So, uh, to to yeah. do a system really fast, this, this is awesome. Yeah, VAV single duct cat file. But then what do you get out of it? I'll open it. Okay. <coughs> I'll hit duplicate because so I have that many controllers. Let's say I also have on my MSTP network. Now I'm just going to add stuff so you can see it, like RTU-1. And that guy's at number 21. And I'll go to my place where I have my RTU cat file. Open. Right? And then I also have on my MSTP network, I have, you know, uh, uh, symbol dash one, and that'd be like a simple central plan, right? One chiller, one uh, boiler. But I'm just adding these things on here so you guys can see kind of what they look like. Simple central plan. Open that guy there. And then what else do we add on an MSTP network? I'm going to add on my uh, uh, fan club. Air one. Oh, air handling. Yeah, air handling. Yeah, we'll do air handling. AHU dash one. Right? And so that guy I've got uh, at address number 23. And I've got two more of those. I'll add those guys on there. AHU, mixed air, single path, and I'll hit duplicate. Right? So I'm adding a bunch of devices so you can add whatever you have, right? 
do your thing, right? So that's the simple. Oh, put an N2 network on there as well. Let's do that. N2 network, and let's say those are VAV controllers, and that's VAV dash. Could you move to your right just a hair? Thank you. Okay, VAV dash. Um, let's say this one VAV dash 34, and this at N2 address number seven, and I've got uh, you know uh, seven more of those guys. And I'll go pick my. Uh, let's see my VAV CAF file open. Right, and you can do this with CAF files, APD files, or PRN files. <coughs> right, I'll just hit duplicate, right? So now I've got a bunch of devices on two separate buses. So that's my whole network, that's my whole installation. Okay, I picked all my CAF files. Now if I want to, I've got optional things. <coughs> I can add a schedule. If I want to, like a default schedule so that when you turn it on, it runs and I get air moving, right? I put things in occupied, unoccupied. I pick a schedule type. Let's say I have an enumerated schedule. I'm giving it a name, weekly schedule. And my enumeration units are occupied, unoccupied, bypass, and standby. And now let's just give it some times so that we can put a default schedule in there. So Monday through Friday from oh, 12 a.m. to whatever time, let's go uh, 5 a.m., I'm uh, unoccupied. Add it. Monday through Friday from 5 a.m. to, mm, I don't know, 8 p.m., let's say whatever, 7 p.m., I'm occupied, add it, and then Monday through Friday from 7 p.m. to midnight, I'm unoccupied. And add that, add that in there, okay? So we can do things for the weekend, too, for Friday or for Saturday or Sunday. Like, so let's say Sunday, I'm just from 12 a.m. to 12 a.m., I'm unoccupied all day long. Right. And we can do one for Saturday, you know, whatever we want to do, right? Now hit save. So I put a default schedule in there. And then my last option, if I want to take advantage of it, it's groups. And groups are a concept of like, let's say I want to take a look at all zone temperatures and put them into one bucket. So I can take a look at the zone temperatures for all my rooftops, for all my feed and feed boxes. So I give the group a name, a folder name, like zone temp. And then the point the style, our naming convention is ZN-T for zone temp. So it'll pick any points that have ZN-T in them and put them into this bucket, right? Or like, you know, VAV flows. So that's uh, SA-F, right? Or discharge air, right? DA-T. So it'll bucketize all those guys for you, right? If you want to create those buckets. So what I've done now is given the station a name, added two networks, added a bunch of devices, put in a default schedule, and some default groups. As you can see back in my main thing now, this has changed from all zeros to you know, two networks, 24 devices, one schedule, and three groups. All I have to do now is hit build station. Okay, and what that's gonna do is it runs macro in the background, and it's gonna connect up to my workbench, and ask me to put in my platform connection to my computer. So this is my Windows user login, I log into my state on my platform with. And then also, it's, it's, ad, it's prompting you for the admin password that you can use for the station, right? So you gotta put in something strong, whatever you normally use. Let me try that again. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I did that one right. Okay. And so I put that in there, and I hit OK. Remember, we come this, this station name is Jackson Controls. And right here, if I go back to this guy, this view, I don't have Jackson Controls there at, at all in my, sta in my station that I've created, right? So I'll go back to this and hit OK. And now what that's going to do is it's going to run the macro in the background. Now it's going to take all the information we put with the CAF files, the schedule, the groups. It's going to take all those guys create a station down here. There's Jackson Controls, it's now there. I'll click on it and you guys can see how this, uh, how this works, how it creates a station, but it's gonna start from an idle position at the bottom to starting a station and to running station. And it's gonna add all the devices, it's gonna add the networks, it's gonna add the schedule, it's gonna add all the groups, it's gonna create all the graphics, add trends, add your alarms, add your totalizations, <coughs> everything like that, all for you and you have an easy way to configure the home page. So right now it's starting the station, right? I don't know what turns that to the transit tool or something. 
Well, what we do is when we when you use our appliance, what we had before is, let's say you go to a network and you add a device. When you find a device that we have, we've got these things called system library files, where it says, oh, if you have an A E2 application, here's the subset of all the possible points that come in when you discover it, and we'll automatically put trends or a large totalization on these points. So if you like more points, you can change the system library around and say, you know what, I always want you know, box heating temperature, right? We don't bring that one in as normal, right? But you can our K factor. I always want to see what the K factor is, right? We don't bring that one in, but if you want to, you can automatically have that one come in. Or I always, I always trend something that we don't trend. I'll show you what I mean, but you can checkbox that one. So right now I got a station here that's now running. So I'll click on that to start that, to view that station. I'll click twice, put in my admin password, hit OK, and now it changes to my station is now there, so it's on my machine. If I look at my config, I've got my drivers. There it added my net network is always there, Niagara is always there. It added my backnet, my N2 network. So it's no more configuring of the backnet network of my you know, local device, changing it to something that's not negative one, putting <coughs> in the blog, right, enabling it. It's all right there. <coughs> I've added all my devices that are here. When I click on them, it's created all of my graphics for each one of these guys that I've done, for my VAVs, my rooftop units, for my simple central plant, one chiller, one boiler. It's done everything. It's done everything for you, right? Did it clean up the graphics also? It cleans up the graphics depending upon the way you answer the question and the answer. Like when I did this chiller application, I said I have you know three chillers and I have two cooling towers. If you have three cooling towers, it'll add the third one on there. You know? On my, on my uh, rooftop unit, I said I had, you know, supply fan, I had stage heating as opposed to modulating heating, right? If you had modulating heating, it would show a modulator or something like that. <coughs> right? Here I have an exhaust fan, right? right? If, it doesn't have, if you don't have an exhaust fan, it won't show up. And I'll show you where all this is residing so you guys can utilize this stuff to your advantage as well. And hopefully I can explain it to you uh, succinctly. So anyway, I've got all those devices right there. And not only has it created views for my computer, it's also created the handheld graphics for each one of the devices. So now if I set up a user to use as an iPhone view or an Android view, this is the graphic they'll see. So it creates them both. For chillers, for air handling units, for VAV boxes, everything. Right? It's created all those graphics automatically. It's also in each one of these guys like say a VAB box right here, it's also brought in some points. These are the points that we thought were the most important ones to bring in. You can change that, but this is the subset of points. We said bring in these points. Not only that, we also have a link to an extensions page, right? And so when we brought this thing in, we said, you know what, you're probably going to want to trend zone temperature, and if I have a humidity, we will probably trend that one and put a, a, a totalization on the supply fan, how many times it goes on and off. And also, you know, uh, heating and discharge air temperature. We're not trending supply air temperature, right? But maybe you want to trend supply air temperature, right? If I want to add a trend to it, all you do is check the box. I can add a change of value or interval trend. Yep. Yep. If I want to alarm something, like I want to alarm supply air temperature, right? I click on the arrow here. I can do an out of range or a status. Oh, out of range. I can put that alarm on there. If I don't want to totalize this guy, I can take it off. Oh, I want to do a totalization, yes. i am totalized how many times the thing goes on and off. For any point. And you can do this, this is a view that gets added, whether or not you're doing the spreadsheet or you're adding a device afterward. And I'll show you how to do that, right? And one thing that uh, David mentioned before was curious about, and this thing is kind of hidden, and we did this a couple of revisions ago. You see this little blue box over here, up in the corner? I hope you can see it right up here, right up there. See that blue box? In the point extension view manager, you click on that box, what we've automatically done is hidden something here, is the tuning policies. So when we bring in a point, we take the right tuning policy for that type of point. So that it's not pulling so often or asking for that information so often, it's separate rates. If you want to change it or add it, you can just click on it and <coughs> choose one of the different you know, rates. So like here, when we talked about peer-to-peer -peer stuff, if I have a peer-to-peer -peer value that I want to go back and forth, I probably want to tag that one as a network input peer policy. So that'll peer, it'll, it'll uh, pull at the right rates for that type of point. And each one of these guys are described. All this stuff that I'm talking about here 
it's described if you have Workbench, you go to your C drive, whatever version of Workbench you have. Um, you can have multiple versions of you know Workbench on the same computer. But I go to 6.0, I go into my JCI standards folder, and this right here, FX Workbench. This explains all the stuff that make up what we've done on top of the Niagara platform and how to work with all this stuff. Right? So you can do tuning policies for N2 stuff or tuning policies, let's see what's backnet, backnet tuning policy properties. And I scroll down here and let's see what there's a description of what, uh, you know, what the different tuning policies are here for each one of these things. So network peer policy, what it's set up for, how often it, you know, change of value subscription, things like that. So we put those tuning policies beside the default one in there to optimize the point type with how often it should be communicated, okay? So I've got my graphic that's been created. I've got my handheld graphic, brought in my subset of points, my subset of extensions. Finally, go take a look at the totalizations page, the automatic link to be able to take a view as to how many times the thing has gone on and off. A link to my alarms page, and also a link to my history. So I can go back and do a quick link to the history so I can take a look at whatever I have as far as that I've been trending. Plus, it's also got a link to my home screen. So I go back to my home screen. We give you a default home screen here so that you can utilize this. And it you know, links to your networks, links to your schedules, links to your, uh, you know, like a offline summary. An automatic PX page shows anything that's offline when it's running will show up here. Uh, automatic link to a PX page override. Anything that's overwritten will show up in this view. Right? I don't have anything like systems. Systems is what devices do I have on this particular uh, uh, system. We used to keep this and put like default stuff like air handling unit one two three four five VAV box one two three four five, and you had to go through and change the name from VAV box you know one two three four five and do the hyperlink to it. Okay. So what we did as a change for this is you're able to go up to your tools button, drop down, and do update homepage graphic. You click on that guy, then you pick which one. These are all the ones I can be connected to. Local host is my computer, right? So I'll just do that one. Yes. I'll go back to my root. And now I've got links on my graphic page to each one of my, <coughs> each one of my devices. Okay? So all you really have to do on the home page is edit it, change it from Johnson Controls, and change the graphic to the location. And you're looking pretty good for a home screen, right? You mentioned the bucket. Oh, right. We'll go to that, we'll go to that as well. Also here in my root directory, my schedule manager, here's my schedule that I added. I can click twice on it and view it. That's what we put in there, right? Oh, I forgot to do Saturday. I'll just go Saturday, click and drag the whole day there. I'm just unoccupied and hit save, right? So now I have schedules in there for, for the day, right? If I want to change something, I can maneuver the schedule, right? Whatever I want to do here, I want to change it, do whatever I want, I can do that. Go back to my schedule manager. The only thing I don't have is I got the schedule, what we have here, right? But I don't have a link to any points. I highlight my schedule that I want to utilize. Go to new link. All the points I could possibly write a link to with the schedule are here. I'll just sort and go, okay, here's all my points. Ox schedule is my point. Uh, where is ox schedule? Right here. Ox schedule is my point. I can just go like this. Check, 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 check. Now I'm linking all the occupied points for all those controllers to the schedule that I've got here. And hit link. Now I've linked all those things up, so they're gonna follow the schedule now. At 5 a.m. at 5 a.m. on Monday morning, it's all gonna to go to occupied. For all those points. Last thing we have here is the little quick thing, point groups. Remember all those uh, point groups we set up? Zone temperatures, VAV flows, and discharge air. If I go in that bucket, all the points that I have that are ZN-Ts, they're all in this bucket and show their values. All the things for VAV flows, they're all going to be there. Everything with discharge air temperature is going to be there. So I bucketize those points in case you want to do that. We've taken this kind of a step further too. I mentioned um, Point Summary Manager, and I kind of don't know if I explained it very well, but Point Summary Manager is a thing that we added so that you can take a look at like all the VAV boxes. Let's say I want to take a look at all those VAV boxes all at once. And I want some particular points that I want to see from each one of those VAV boxes. So we've got some summaries here that we've already pre-done, but you can pick whatever you want as the columns. Let's just take a look at this guy right here. So it's going to show my VAV box 
what network it's on, what station it's on, because you could have multiple stations if you're at a server level. It's going to show what network it's on, backnet or N2. It's going to show my zone temperature, state value, <coughs> zone temperature, set point, supply air temperature, discharge air temperature, and damper position for all the boxes. So I'll add that guy on there and hit OK. I'll give it a name, VAV uh, summary. VAV summary. I'll hit OK. Now it's saved. Every day I can come in here and go click twice on this, take a look at my device filter and filter out things I don't need. I just want VAV single duck. OK. Now it's showing those values for every one of my VAV boxes. And when it's live and running, if something's offline, it'll show it as yellow or whatever your, you know, whatever your color scheme is. If it's an alarm, it'll show red. If you want to take and override all the dampers from one spot, or just one of them, or several of them, you just highlight that guy and hold down the control key to pick other ones, or the shift key to pick multiples like that, and you right click, and you can override. So any point that's a right of a one, you can do that. So you can set up like a view for a balancer, have them log on, override all the, the valve positions at 100%, or all the dampers at 100% for whatever time. Override for, you know, whatever the choice there, one minute, 30 minutes, whatever, custom, and it'll do that. So this way I can take a look and say, oh, guess what? I have all these VAV boxes. Every one of them is kind of maintaining temperature, you know, or maintaining discharge air or whatever the case might be. But there's one that's odd. What's, what's going on with that one? Or rooftops. Let's say I've got a, you know, some sort of a, a factory type of installation. they got 35 rooftops. You'd think all those 35 rooftops would be acting pretty similarly, right? Why is this one not working, right? It's not going to tell you it's not an alarm, but at least you can compare it against all the other ones. You know, maybe you have the right side of the building and the left side of the building. While the right side VAV box is doing something, the left side doing something else. Oh, that's right, the sun's coming up over here, so you know it's probably working harder to put out more cold air. But it's a great way to see all similar types of equipment. And with uh, in March, we're going to release 6.1. So when you save this, uh, now you don't have to filter again. Your report will just come back to this. Remember we had a filter you know, on this by device filter? Now you don't have to. You won't have to. Once you save this one, it'll always come up with just VAV boxes. Okay. So you can do anything that you want. You know, new point summary manager, I'm going to give a new point summary. I can just pick templates that I've done or just pick, pick points. Okay. Oh, anything that's got a boiler 1A, I can add that guy on there as a point. So with any point that's available in your whole system from all the controllers, I can add that one in there. These are all like you know, the SA flow, the absolute air effort in EWMAs, those are all points inside of a VMA controller. The further they are from one, the less in control you are. So there's flow, heating, point. So you might monitor, bring that point in and monitor air, right, for flow. You'll know, guess what, if I got a value higher than one, there's something wrong. Maybe that damper, you know, is, is, is slipping a little bit or the actuator isn't tightened down on that or something like that. Things that you wouldn't be an alarm, it's just there, right? So you can see that. Any questions? Let me do it again. I'm glad you took over this. Right? Didn't even know, didn't even know it was there. Yeah. Tools? Oh. Most, it's like everything. Launch project oh, file. It's unbelievable. Start the spreadsheet, and you're good. And let's say I've done this job, and I've got the next job that's very similar to this. Just save this file, open it up again, change the name to a new station, because you already got Jackson controls on there. Build a station. I'll create the same thing for you. Make a change. Get rid of a network. Get rid of devices. Do that. Go back. Build station. <coughs> what if you just want to set it up just to build your networks or just do simple stuff? You know, you know what I mean? It's just a real simple way to set yourself. So if you open the other job and you've already changed the, like the front end graphic to instead of being Johnson's building in Minneapolis, is uh, you know, your building or maybe the building is from the site. Mm -hmm. Does it pull that one in or is it pulling the yeah. No, it got in all of the things that we have here, in all of our file in the files bucket over here, that's where we have all of our graphics stuff. So in the graphics folder, excuse me, admin homepage is right there. You change this one and let's say um here, like I, I did this yesterday. I did it for yes. Let's see. Let's say I want to take this, I'll go to my pictures bucket and let's say here. Uh, let's say I've got Lambo Field, right? And that's my that's my picture. My, I went took a picture, whack, took it. It's on my machine, right? I'll take this guy and I'll copy it. I'll go to my C drive, go to JCI, 
with that station, where my workbench is that I'm using. I'm going to my stations, that's one we've created. I'll go down to where Jackson Controls is. That's my Jackson Control station. Click in there. In my graphics folder, right there, there's all the default graphics. I'm going to do this edit and paste. So I'm putting that Lambo Field J JPEG in there. Now, when I go back to this, I can go here. I can edit this guy. <coughs> and now I'm doing it on the home page, the one that I'm doing right now. I can always change this guy to <coughs> hit OK. Now, every one that I create, from now on in this station, or review this guy, admin home page is going to be Jackson Controls. And then here, I'll take this picture out and I'll put in, I'll navigate to my thing and go to where Lambo Field is, hit open, OK, OK, and now I've got that. <coughs> now I've basically done everything I need to do a station. Trends, alarms, schedule, points, graphics. Well, that's, that's you got to stop the permissions, you know what I mean? you got to stop the permissions. And that's confusing for anybody, right? No way to automate that. But at least you have all the stuff, and I've got links to, you know, my BACnet network. I've got links to my N2 network. Get the N2 also. Yep. I've got all my controllers. Right, whether they be N2 or BACnet. Okay, so like I can navigate from this thing to just go whatever I want. And if I want to put a link on here, say he doesn't want global data alarm inhibit link, say he wants to change that one so I can edit this guy and take this guy and navigate to a spot in my hyperlink here to the point summary that I just set up, he can have that and so that he clicks on this button and takes him directly to his VAV point summary that he looks at every single day to see how my VAV box are doing. Or my rooftops. The, and the biggest thing we have complaints seems like people don't want to use the graphics. I mean, those are trading graphics, which are, I think, are just fine. I know a lot of people want to spend a lot of time on their own graphics and everything else and customizing, but if you don't have to, to, to win a project or something, I don't know why anybody would waste the time. Justifying it. Yeah, I, I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, even if you didn't use the asset, you just had your own CAM files or whatever you did, but if you did use the asset and then use this uh, our appliance that's built into here, that's a huge time saver. I mean, you, you can really see doing a project from start to beginning, from drawings to valve schedules to flow drawings to build your graphics and this system up and running in, in, a, in a few hours. That's pretty, that's pretty incredible. And so, and so, how does it create the graphics? How does it, how does it do it? How does it know it? What's, what's going on? Well, the, the reason why you might care is, is two things, right? One is, let's say you like this VAV box graphic, but you always add something onto this graphic that's really cool. You know what I mean? You put something on each one of them. But you want it to show up every time you create one of these. You can go through in the template here, in the files directory. In this, we have two sets of graphics. We have our old graphics, that was with the blue fans, the old Niagara you know, graphics, and then the new ones that they, they redid, right? In the, in the graphics file here is all the templates for all those things. For any devices that are N2 devices or APD files with FX Builder, they're all in here. Anything that's PCT is in here. So these are all the templates for all those things. So if I want to add something to a template, I can add that to a template so every time it creates that one, it's going to add that cool thing to it. You edit these templates. All it's doing when it, when it gets it is it's going to the tools, the uh, system library editor is what we call it. I'll take a look at these. These are XML files for everything that we have. And so let's take a look at VAV box, for instance. VAV single level. You hit open. When you import a file with VAV in it, it's going to go to this guy and it's going to pick this graphic file for handheld and for PX. PCT, VAV, SD, SF, right? SF, HX. It's also going to import these particular points. If they're existing, it's going to bring in the ones with the checkbox with the import. Even if cooling max flow is existing, it's not going to bring that one in when you import it, right? How many points do you need for a VAV box? 
I don't know, it's debatable, right? But anyway, if I every time I want to bring in one of those guys, I want that point to come in. I'll check box import, it's automatically going to bring that point in every time. If I want to add an alarm to something, I add an alarm to it. And that's where these trends, these are the ones where we pick. We said, all right, when you get zone quality for humidity or uh, CO2, I'm adding a 15 minute interval trend on there. If I don't want that ever, 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 remove it. So it's up to you. I imported some PCBs to a new station, and on the extension manager, my trend options were only interval. It didn't give me an option for a COB trend. Is that because of something I did wrong, or is that because that library file doesn't have COB trend? No, it, it should have those in the facility explorer bucket, in the point extension defaults. You should have your trends in here. Go to, go to VAV1. Go to, okay. go to the point extension manager for VAV1. Uh, on the back net? Yeah, that was a back net. <coughs> and go to my extension. Right click on one of those. For a trend? Yeah, for a trend. Well, see, mine was not giving me COB. It was only giving me well, interval. Again, so that's the thing is if, if in the, it's pulling those things, those choices, yeah. from here. Uh, the point extension uh, manager right here. Point extension defaults. Okay. So numeric trend, I've got C over your interval. If I get rid of this guy, let's say I'll get rid of this guy, delete. And I don't know, maybe file save station. We'll go back to this first. Got to save it. I don't know if I got to save it, but if I go to this guy, then it's still there. Maybe here with uh, Let's do this. Save station. Uh, I meant down on the bottom right on your Yeah, I got, I got that one. Let's see what's, we'll do a uh, refresh tree. So let's go back to this guy and go to VAV1. I'll go to my extensions. It still doesn't, it still adds it. It should be there. Interval. It's pulling it from this guy. So I would check your bucket over here, your bucket right here in your facility explorer, yeah. point extension default. They've got to be here in order to be able to chosen. All right. Okay. So um, again, the tools, system library editor, that's where it looks for those particular points. That's where it looks for the graphic to associate it with, whatever the case might be. So you're going to be able to configure those and do whatever you want with them. Okay. Was that a, uh, I think you changed it on a numeric point type and it's an EM. That schedule was an EM. Which one? That you were doing in the list. Oh, in, in, in this view over here? This view? No, the cancel that screen now. That's an even point that you're trying, the effective set point, was that what you was trying to change? Effective occupancy? All right, effective occupancy. Oh, yeah, see, that one only gives that, now it only gives COV. Yeah. Yeah, it only gives but down on your, your point extension defaults, you change the numeric trend, not the email. Oh. Okay. All right. So that's what it, oh yeah. Well, numeric trend. Yeah. So if I have enumeration trend still has. There we go. You're right. Right. So what I did was I had a point that was effective occupancy. That's an enumerated point. Right. Where a numeric point like zone set point. Because I deleted it, I only have COV because it's only. So for some reason that's not in there, I just got to grab it right. out of the palette. You just got to grab it from the palette, dump it in there, and then you have that function available to you. Right, I only have COV for a numeric time, but for a numerator, I did have interval. Quick. Awesome. Okay. So let's say that I got this. Now let's say I've got this station, and I'm running, and I've got this Niagara network, or BACnet network here, and i got my device manager. I don't want to save that. So here's all the devices that I have. Right? And I created this with a spreadsheet, or you don't want to use the spreadsheet, you just want to go from scratch. Okay? So what you can do is if I had a live network here, I'd hit the discover button, it would find all that stuff on there, so it would find, you know, PCG at address, <coughs> or I'm adding a new one, in that case I'll just add a new one, so same thing you get, right? New, backnet device, and it would come up like this, you give it a name, um, heat pump, my device ID, 5,000, 
45. My network is uh, 5,000. And my MAC address is at its address number oh, 26 or 45. 45. Okay, so I'm adding a new device, just like you normally would. Okay, then I'll go to my JCI BACnet import manager. There's also an N2 import manager, so same thing on N2 and BACnet. This is the only guy that doesn't have any associations. I just created it or just discovered it. I don't have any associations. <coughs> if you discover a whole network of points or controllers, all those controllers will show up here. Okay, I'll take this guy and edit it. So here's a take a look. Here's the name of my device. Here's where I can point to that resource file. So if I have it, I can point to it. And wherever it is, C colon users, I'll go to a place where I have my CAD file. Oops, nope, that's not what I want to call it. Me. Uh, documents, ABCS, and I'll go to I'll go to my heat pump CAD. And you can do the same thing with an APD file or a PRN file. I hit open. And that's what that is doing, the spreadsheet is doing for you behind the scenes is it's picking, oh, guess what? You have a heat pump application. I'm going to select the standard graphic file from those templates for heat pump. And that's the template that we have in, in, the, in the graphics, in the, in the files folder. Right? I'm picking those guys. And so it's also going to bring in a certain subset of points for the heat pump because we configured it that way. Okay? And then it gives you the option to create a new graphic file or create an HX graphic file. Graphic file is for the big computer. HX is for the handheld. So I can create those if I want to. And so it takes that template and creates a PX file for the computer <coughs> and for the handheld, puts it in the graphic folders and names it heat pump, you know, HX and heat pump PX. You hit OK and it's going to add that device to my network. There it is. And build the graphic for it. So before we had the spreadsheet, you had to go to the network, discover your networks. Do it all this way. Now we did the spreadsheet, and hopefully it's a little bit faster. Right? So it's all the same thing. My points, my extensions, right? so on and so forth. So it's only the same navigation. My home screen is here. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have a key pump on here. Uh, I can do this tools, update home page graphic, local host, yes. Navigate back to my home screen, and add the heat pump on there. With the hyperlink right to it. So these are some of the things that you can utilize, hopefully. And if you got suggestions for making it better, it's awesome. We'd love to have that. We have a, a small group of guys that can do stuff quickly, hopefully. So at least uh, you know that might that might uh, make it more beneficial. Um, with our six one release coming out, uh, and again in March, this thing is going to be expanded, so you can add things like relationships. So you can say, oh yeah, this VAD box is served by this air handling unit and this uh, boiler. So you can navigate by relationships as opposed to, all right, that somehow I don't think the operator knows what is the driver, what is my backnet network, what are my devices. You can navigate by Bob's office, Bill's office, and show the relationships. Maybe the VAV box is performing poorly, not because the VAV box is bad, but maybe because it's getting something bad from the boiler, right, or bad from the air handler. Right? And you can show those relationships. So it'll be kind of cool to be able to do that. And it'll create quicker, shorter pages, home screen navigation type stuff. So you can navigate around with like little pictures and stuff. So we're kind of working toward that, uh, toward that end. Just hopefully, you know, and agree. Maybe this isn't exactly what you want for a heat pump unit. Maybe you want to change these guys around. You can change <coughs> the templates in the files directory for these guys. And when you add a controller, when I add a device on here, backnet network, view, backnet device manager, I'll add a new device on there. Okay, I would say that's all good. I'll go to my JCI import manager view. Take this guy. I can associate with an existing graphic file, so I can navigate to whatever file I want to. And I can navigate to whatever, oops, sorry. I can navigate to whatever I want to here and pick whichever one I want and utilize that graphic. So let's say you, you took one of our template files, but you modified it. Be my guest. You just associate with that thing. As long as the point name, as long as the point names that are on the controller or that come through from the controller match up with the point names that this guy is looking for, the graphic is looking for, 
So it's looking for, in order to be able to show that, <coughs> this heating section right here, in order to be able to make that view come alive, it's looking for a point that's HTG dash O. So if you use the third party controller, and it's H E A T I N G dash O, when you discover it and pull it in, and you want to use a template, if you rename that point to HTG dash O, it'll show up on the graphic. Or if you change the graphic and say, I'm looking for H E A T I N G dash O, it'll show up. Does that make sense? Yep. I didn't do a very good job of explaining that yesterday. So you can take any of these templates that we have and modify them to your heart's content. And then just when you discover a device, point to that graphic. As long as the so naming convention matches. Pretty graphics, even if you were. Yeah. You just copy and paste your PXs in there. And just so that the naming matches up, it'll show that. And if you use ours, they're all they're all um, relativized. So I can use one graphic for 100 GAB boxes and do it that way. So when I click on a VAV box, it's using the same standard graphic, so I'm populating with the information from VAV 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever you click on. So you can modify those things and, and do whatever you want to do. But this is just a starting point, and you know, you can get as crazy as you want with all the graphics and the views and the navigation. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking to myself that if we could make PCT just a little bit easier so that everybody can use it easily, and then match, match up with this. I think the most limitation comes not from creating something like this, but creating an application in PCT and hitting download and going, well, I hope this works. Mm. You know, because that does happen. It's complicated, right? <coughs> but if you can make that a little bit easier and couple it with something like this, it's, uh, it'll make your job a whole lot easier. So, I don't know. Anybody got uh, questions? That's about it, right? Yeah. yeah. If there's anything else you guys want to hear, see, no. You said you could make a, you know, a handheld profile, a HX oh. profile, and, and then if you log in with a computer, you get the larger graphic of no Java. Right, right. Um, here's what you do. Uh, let's see if I can, uh, if I can do this here. Let's. Uh, I'll go to a live station here, and I'll see if I can connect up to this guy. Oops. So this one is in in Milwaukee, in in my play area of stuff. And uh, you guys have so much fun. Uh, it's hard to get spots. Medicines really takes up a lot of room. They don't have a whole lot of room for facility explorer. Um, but what I did is I set up a, a view called iPad. <coughs> so I gave this guy, you know, you can do your administrative rights, whatever you want to do. And I picked the nav file as hxlargenavfile.nav. And you do that by hitting here, and it automatically goes to my nav files down here. So HX large nav file dot nav. And then when I go into my uh, default web profile and my mobile web profile, I select JCI handheld HX profile. Okay? And then when I do that, if I, lo if I log on to a device, 10, uh, let's see, it's Q, 10, uh, 10, uh, 87, 89. And hopefully I got the password here correct. I had, hopefully, yes, no. Let's try this one. Hey, second time's charm. All right. So now I'm just logging into that guy. And normally you'd have to worry about Java to be able to do that. And so now I'm not. You log into admin. Who? You log into admin. Oh, did I? Yeah, you did. Oh, cancel. Turn it off. That's all right. You can go with uh, pen. All right. Oh, I still think I'm the closure browser. Yeah, closure. Yeah, close all right. Cancel. Let's try this again. I did your pen. So this is the, the template that you get with, the, uh, with our, our navigation with the iPhone. 
uh, graphic, the HX small navigation. You can navigate through your systems, schedules, and alarms. This is my standard home page. If I click onto this guy, here I'll click on my station so you can see it in workbench view. Oh, already on. So here's my view in work in my workbench view. It's the same view here. I can take a look at things like I can take a look at my VAV boxes. I can take a look at my floor plans. I have all that stuff that I can that I can navigate to. Hopefully, if I have a link to this guy, yeah, VAV box, everything comes through. <coughs> We're thinking about twin. Does this, does this look like it's anything good? Instead of having this in the corner, would you guys want maybe a smaller circle that shows kind of what's going on the NS sensor? And the, that add new value, you know? Right. Anyway, we're kind of It's a so, whole lot easier to see. It's not nearly as cluttered that way. Right. So instead of having you know like zone temperature here like this, just having a smaller circle here and just putting it right there. Yep. You know, maybe that's maybe that's kind of cool. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so I can still see all my stuff, but I can take a look and I navigate, you know, through my systems. And this is the view to how you navigate to this. So I can take a look at my points that are there. I can take a look at things like zone temperature in detail, right? I can take a look at my histories. Here, I can add live histories to go onto it so I can actually trend a point on my phone and go, all right, I'm gonna do a live history on this guy for whatever whatever time period you want to be able to take a look at that. So the navigation is the same as the small handheld. It's the navigate. It's, it's this thing, right? The graphic is the big one. It's the big graphic. If you do HX small nav, you're gonna get the small graphics. Okay, if you do the large ones, you get the large graphics. But here, now I'm looking at this, and it's independent of Java. So if this view is good enough for somebody, you know, instead of having the, instead of having the capability to do this, right? Instead of having this capability over here, I'm navigating like this. I can go to my schedules. I can take a look at my alarms. You know, I can take a look at all my systems. <coughs> you all know, my graphics come through. If I get a graphic for this guy, I don't know if I have one, but they all come through, everything's shown, but it's in the large stuff. This is your navigation as opposed to your tree diagram on the left hand side. So if they're just looking to work it, no Java required. So does all your animations work? Yeah, all the animations work, everything's everything's there. And you still have, you know, when you create something, if you want to add in your uh, you know palette. We take a subset of all the stuff in Kit PX Graphics. So this is on my computer again. So I have access to all the graphics, right? So all the, you know, chiller symbols, you know, all the uh, duct work, everything like that. To create our templates, we've taken a subset of those and put those in a folder for a station in here called PX. So that's where all of our templates look for the graphics. This is a subset of all the stuff. So like if you create a chiller graphic automatically, automatically with ours, it's going to automatically pick a York looking chiller. Right? But if you don't like that and you can change them all out, you go to those templates, add this guy into your, into your uh, PX file and point to that one, it'll change them all. So the full subset of all the stuff is here, available for you. We just don't install them on a supervisor. You can use them in Workbench, but they're not all on here. So if you get this guy, use a web browser, want to create a graphic with a chiller that's not a York chiller, you have to use it. <coughs> Any other questions? Yeah, so I, with this view, just encourage you to try it. Play around with it. Set a guy up for it and you know, put it on your phone and do it. Put it on your computer and do it. HX small or HX large, and that's again in the, in the nav files. Is that just in six? Uh, no, we've had the net. We've had the HX large. Yeah, HX large might be five two. Yeah, yeah. So when you set up a guy like this guy iPhone setup, it would be you know HX nav file. .nav, HX nav file .nav, right, as opposed to HX large. There's HX large and HX nav. HX nav gives you the same thing like this, this navigation system, but the graphics are the small handheld graphics versus the large ones. Full version of Niagara is 6. 
three out of eight. Yeah, all of our stuff is um, Niagara. Three dot eight is JCI. Uh, six dot oh whatever six dot X. Three dot seven is five dot X. X sorry. Three dot six is four dot X. Three dot five is three dot X. Just keep them the same. <laughs> And then if you do set up a user, let's say you set up a user for HX nav file nav, and they log on with an iPad, there's, a, there's actually a button on there that you can hit, say, size my screen, right? And it'll size it correctly and then bring you the big views on an iPad. But the downside of that is if they go back on with an iPhone and they log in with the same thing, they're going to see the big iPad views. So, you know, it, it's just a way to do it. There's no problems with iPhone or iPads uh, editing points? No. I mean, you can you can't you can't right click on something. You know, like here with a computer, I can right click and right. override off and on. You'd have to go to the points, you know, and then override it there. Override okay. it there. You can't do it from the graphic. You can't do it from the graphic on a because there's no. I don't think there's a right click function. You know, if you, hold it, if you hold it down normally. It's kind of like a right click. Function. Oh, maybe that's it. Maybe I tried that. That's what I tried it. I could not get to work. Couldn't get to work. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, you have to, you have to remember the points. You know, but all of our graphics do, it's something that's overridable or writable. You can you right click on it, you can override it. You know, from the graphic views. Thanks, guys. Yep, well, thanks for your attention and appreciate it.